All right, how slow is JavaScript? I've gotten a lot of flack for using JavaScript for a lot of these projects, and possibly rightly so. Historically, it's been a super slow language, not one that you'd associate with game development, and I'm actually not sure how fast it is. I'm not actually a JavaScript programmer, I just kind of play one in these videos, so I'm kind of curious what we find here. A very brief history of JavaScript. Apparently, life for JavaScript started out around 1993, a programmer for Netscape named I feel like the history of JavaScript has been told so many times at this point. It might be the most told story in the programming world. And Brendan Ike crapped it out over the course of 10 days, which is pretty amazing given its popularity today. We'll fast forward a bit. A bunch of crap happened over the years. JavaScript got standardized through ECMA International. None of this is particularly... And then JavaScript got stabbed in the buns by Microsoft. Why do I know this voice? I have no idea. Yeah, Microsoft uh, really hurt a lot of uh, ECMAScript. They were really trying to make JScript or whatever it was called. The thing. What's ECMA? ECMA <laughs> decent. Irrelevant to us, so let's just kind of skim through here. So in 2006, Google hired this guy, Lars Back, to build a new JavaScript engine that would go on to become V8. And this is where things got interesting. Okay. Because this is where JavaScript changed from being this painfully slow interpreted language to one that had JIT compilation. And I like over the it. years, a seemingly endless stream of clever optimizations has trickled out from the V8 team, dramatically improving performance year after year. I, I do think that that is just not said enough. V8 is truly the reason why JavaScript is awesome. V8 made what a crappy language... V, the V8 team was so talented, they took one of the worst languages of all time and made it pretty fast. Like... They did a pretty good job. <laughs> like, no one could be upset about that. Oh, I should really cover that mic arm, shouldn't I? Like, they did that. They did that. Imagine how hard that had to be. Uh, you sound like you're friends with someone who worked on the V8 team. <laughs> In 2019, at the International JavaScript Conference, there was a talk called Speed, 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 JavaScript versus C++ versus WebAssembly by one of Google's engineers. Oh, I saw that talk. Is they had some benchmarks where they showed roughly how close JavaScript and C++ was for the same algorithm. Now, I don't have the source they used, but... I, I never liked this comparison because it's so single-minded. Uh, or single... Like, I hate single implementation. Uh, you know, like, if you watch any of my main channel YouTube stuff, you always see how I talk about, like, I've done a lot of performance things. And when it comes to, like, building something actually, even if that actually is small... The difference between JavaScript and something else is is just, you know, it's just massive. It's just massive. They got roughly a 2x difference, which is pretty good. And we'll use that as a baseline for our own comparisons. Let's write some code. By the way, quick reminder to subscribe. And if you want to support me making future videos, there you go. contribute go to my Patreon. Patreon. Now, most go, games go I've ever worked on don't involve millions of string manipulations and stuff. It tends to be mostly math and manipulation of data structures. So we'll stick to that side of things. First up, I'll start with a super... He just hit us with so much math that I don't even know what happened. I just looked at the math, saw some integrals. <sighs> Realize I'm not very good at integrals. You know what I mean? I'm just not that good at integrals. I thought I was good at integrals. I'm not good at integrals. Super basic loop. Gotta have a basic loop. Let's just loop over a bunch of crap and sum it up for something. No reason other than it's easy. You can see the C++ code is pretty simple. Just a for loop. JavaScript yep. code here is virtually identical. Just a simple loop. Sum them up. Wrap the loop in performance.now calls. It runs in about 22 milliseconds or so on the first run, and then 17 milliseconds on later runs. I'm guessing that's the jit. All right. So the thing I don't like about about this type of optimization that that he's speaking about, or just even com this comparison in general, is that one of the biggest problems here is that there is no like interaction with what makes JavaScript bad. You know what I mean? It's like such a tight experience. That JavaScript's big part that it falls apart on is not this. Like, yeah, the JIT's really fast. Like, it did a really good job. But where things aren't good is when you start allocating and deallocating. Notice that we're really just not doing much for allocations or deallocations. Uh, because it's a small number, so they call it a SME, right? So that's stored in a single pointer where the first bit is a zero, I think it is. And that signifies that it's a small integer stored in there. So it's like, it's such like a small nothing that happens in the JavaScript uh, engine. Whereas like the moment you start allocating anything, 
that's when everything starts breaking down. Not only that, but you have to like let it run for a while. Like let it run for five minutes doing something and then watch how much does garbage collection make a real difference in the performance of, say, a server. Uh, I mean, a real. And optimizations kicking in. To really absolutely nobody's surprise, the C++ version is faster. Compiled with GCC-03, yeah. which is the highest optimization level, we get about 15 milliseconds. What's pretty cool is that it's not that much faster than the JavaScript version, only a two millisecond lead. How about we try more complex calculations? Let's emulate a basic... Well, again, he's saying uh, don't do it for uh, game stuff because it's slow. I would assume that you create objects and you throw away objects and stuff like that. I think the garbage collection can be a really big problem. And so I'm curious, like, you have to not create garbage to make it work out in JavaScript. I think you could make one in JavaScript that's like a simple game because you just have to make sure that you statically allocate everything and then you reuse all of your objects and you make sure you never have to use delete, right? You have to have some sort of, like, good way to make pools so that way you don't accidentally make stuff in, like, all these terrible ways, blah, 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 uh, because you never want to, like, delete we'll or do anything. something like this basic GL SL shader with a supplied normal and color and use a directional light. Look something like this chunk of code. JavaScript would I be the same thing. I used to write shaders at one point. I have no idea how they work anymore. I just, it was like a decade and a half ago. Now they're just magic to me. When I look at code, I'm just like, wow, magic. We'll start by generating some random data to serve as the frame buffer, and then just a big loop over all the data to do the dot products, multiplications, etc. cetera. All that magic. Here's the C++ code, about as simple as it can be. Pretty much the same loop, and I've got a vector class here just to simplify things a bit, not unlike the JavaScript version. We'll inline a bunch of stuff, not that it matters. My understanding is that these are hints at best, and ultimately it's <laughs> up on, to the compiler to decide what Please to inline. Please inline me. <laughs> I let this run a bunch of times and took the best of the runs. That gives the JIT compiler time to do its thing, identify and inline stuff, best foot forward and all that. Anyway, got around 110 milliseconds or so, 109 milliseconds on the best run, give or take a few milliseconds here or there. If the first result is any indication, the C++ version will be around 95 milliseconds. But the margin of victory is pretty substantial on the C++ side, 27 milliseconds. So that comes in at over four times faster. For this, just the most basic version of the loop with GCC-03. Let's do another example. So I think that was, that one was getting closer. I wonder if he was uh, creating new objects or was he still reusing the same objects? And the real question is, is he perform? you know, like, again, it just always comes down to garbage collection, and memory and allocation and all that. So if I guess as long as you're reusing everything, maybe it's, you know, you could argue it's not as, as big of a problem as it is. Uh, I mean, I can buy that argument. Game updates tend to involve updating many entities, manipulating data structures, that sort of thing. And I did something similar with these spatial hash grids a while back. Check out that video for the JavaScript implementation, but let's quickly port that. Oh, You'll wow. see that the code That's isn't pretty. anything special, no clever optimizations or anything. This is just a straightforward line-by-line -line port of the JavaScript version to try to be fair. So I'll run the JavaScript benchmark here and we can check out the results. I got around 167 milliseconds or so for Find Nearby and 8 milliseconds for the update, roughly. Now, when we run the C++ version, we get around 86 milliseconds for Find Nearby and 6 milliseconds for the update. So actually not that... I do feel like you can't, you shouldn't port things one for one, like line of code by line of code. You should try to use like the general constructs that are good in one language versus another, right? Like, so if you just did like a straight, you know, transport to Rust, you'd want to use Rusty type principles. And if you, you know, just like we were talking about earlier, like if you're using bind docs or uh, box dine uh, trait references to make it work out in, in Rust, you're going to be doing things that are just inherently slower than not doing it that way and so you know is it should you always write things one you know yeah idiomatic translations not transliteration so a lot of times we do like for these things a lot of times we we would do something like a transliteration where you're actually just line by line transforming that line of code into a different language whereas you should do like meaning for meaning translations greg greg leptos greg understands where that i'm coming from he JS knows version. and very He's in, here. in line with the twice the speed claim from the v8 team what does this all mean all in all, not too bad of a showing for JavaScript. For a straight comparison with C++ code, we got very roughly around two to four times the time for JavaScript to run versus the equivalent C++ code. A bit slower than what Google said, but at the same time... <laughs> meaning for meaning called it. Yeah, you did pick. You always call it. I don't know how you do it. How do you always call it? How do you know? I'm still pretty amazing, given this is supposed to be a slow web language. Let's screw around a bit more. When I compared the dot .product version, I had written several versions comparing performance. The version shown wasn't the fastest, but it also wasn't the slowest. I played with versions that were straight array implementations, so normal and color was a three-element array. I also tried it out with objects with X, Y, Z properties, and they all were roughly in the same ballpark, give or take. There might be small differences, but I kind of lumped them together. I also wrote a for of loop instead of a classic for loop, since I'd heard somewhere that they were slower, but I didn't see a world of difference here. 
And yeah, when I tried just using one big typed array of floats, I managed to get the loop down to 74 milliseconds or so. There you go. These typed arrays, you get a lot of benefits that you just don't get in regular JavaScript. And so I think this is a really important thing that he's calling out right here. Typed arrays in JavaScript allow you to have uh, like a big contiguous block of memory. And so if you're doing operations, especially if you're doing operations that can be easily jitted, you could you could get some pretty amazing things coming out of this. I think that's where you're going to see a lot of the benefits in the JavaScript world. I wonder if I could make a JavaScript program perform really well. You know, just a thought. So about two and a half times slower than the C++ version, albeit at the cost of some readability. But there's some performance foot guns floating around too. When I tried map and for each, their performance was seriously unimpressive. A straight loop was a way bigger win. But wait, there's more. We're not done with C++ yet, because normally in games yeah. when you have a bottleneck that involves churning through a bunch of data, doing calculations, often the first instinct is to go out and break out the intrinsics and vectorize that section of code. So what I did with the first loop was I just quickly crapped out an SSE and an AVX version, so processing <laughs> four or eight floats at a time. Clearly smarter than me. The end result was that our time goes from 15 milliseconds to 6 milliseconds for the SSE version and 4 milliseconds for the AVX version. So not bad. That makes it over four times faster than the JS version. The second loop, the shader, same thing. I went ahead and made a simple SSE version, got a little bit lazy about making an AVX version, but still saw an immediate improvement. The time went down quite a bit. But wait, there's even more. We're using GCC-03 for the tests, but at these games I've worked on, typically they ship with unsafe math optimizations, so we'll go ahead and swap that for dash O fast. One thing to keep in mind is that floating point operations aren't associative, meaning brackets A plus B plus C does not equal to A plus bracket B plus C, since floats are inherently inexact. By specifying dash O fast, we've given the compiler permission to break strict standards compliance and go ahead and reorder floating point statements. For games, this is generally fine. The calculations <laughs> just need to be close. Broken math. Called it. It's enough. <laughs> When we do that, the first loop, the scalar basic version, drops to 4 milliseconds, on par with the AVX version, meaning I kind of wasted time writing that when the compiler's version was just as good. It looks the like second O-part. Test, the basic shader dropped down to 22 milliseconds from 27, so got a decent win there. And I'm not clear I saw much of a win on the spatial hash grid code, but maybe I didn't run it enough times. So what does this all mean? This wasn't meant to be the most scientific of tests. I mostly just wanted to get a rough yeah. idea of JavaScript's relative performance. That being said, honestly, JavaScript surprised me a bit. I mean, I've been screwing around for the last year in my spare time on random projects to see what it could do, but I'm very much not a JavaScript programmer. Spent most of my career in C++ <laughs> with a few years in Python. If you couldn't well, tell well, from okay. my awful JavaScript code. It's definitely not that slow, crappy language that it was back in the 2000s, and the JIT compiler is just going to keep getting better and better over time. So expect the difference between C++ and JS to keep narrowing in the future as the VA team comes up with ever more clever ways of generating machine code. <laughs> with C++... The was that turtle doing drugs? Is that what I'm seeing right now? Are we having some sort of turtley drug problem going on? I don't know about this. This doesn't feel right. Kids, don't be doing JIT, okay? I've heard I've heard a lot of kids have been doing JIT these days on the street. Um and you know, I, I have you seen what your brain have you seen what happens to your brain when you're on JIT? It's not good, okay? Not good. Though I do hear it does help your max, honestly. Like if you're hitting the gym a lot, maybe you do want to JIT a little bit. You know, not like JIT a lot. You don't want to get like some you know, jit rage. You just want to just jit a little bit, you know? Do it for the bros. Come on. Just a little bit. Nice thing is that you've got options. You can go lower and lower level, massaging your code to be even faster, and compilers are super good and getting better every year. I wasn't actually expecting to be GCC. I figured its auto vectorization would have beaten me out easily. Maybe it has something to do with the way I'm using a vec4 as a vec3 with W padding, or maybe I just made some horrible mistake somewhere, but, but anyway. I get the easier role in that I understand my code and my specific intentions, and it sucks to have the compiler's job, I guess. Maybe the next step is to learn to read my mind. Until next time. Cheers. I do, it is kind of funny that we just watched a video. Hey, look, it's me. Hey, look, it's me. Uh, it is kind of funny. Look, they're giving me my own videos. Uh, it is kind of funny that we watched two videos in a row that are effectively the exact same idea, but almost like inversions of each other, where... It, like, he's just like, ah, look, you can get faster, but look at this. This code is kind of like the way I like it. You know what I mean? I kind of like that, you know? Or the other one's like, you get faster now. I don't know. I, I, I think no matter what, JavaScript will always be slower compared to any native option. Like, it just can't beat them. But the benefit of JavaScript is that it's pretty easy to write. You know, like if you're just doing stuff, it's really easy. You can get by really, really quick. I've been using, I've been doing JavaScript. I've been jitting, you know, I've been hitting the jits, you know, for a while now. And I must say it's, it's, it's pretty easy, but it's also not that easy sometimes. Like if you're using TypeScript and you're defining a types of some more complicated operations, 
I'm gonna say that 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 if I were to define this in Rust, I would spend significantly less time. Like so much. Dude, like so much less time. I think that's the thing, is that I think JavaScript written as an application is easier and faster to write than Rust, but JavaScript libraries that involve TypeScript and just doing all that stupid typing that you have to do, I think is just massively, massively harder than Rust. Like by a significant portion. Because the, the the type system is nutty, right? Like the type system is you're you have to write so much more code to make it correct. And then uh it's just it's just a lot harder. I'll be able to show you guys the code here in probably about three months.